Hi there, it's Elizabeth Pfeiffer from ElizabethPfeiffer.com and today's um, little exploration is about being triggered during the holidays. So the holidays have a tendency to cause a lot of triggers, especially around family, because we have a lot of history and the predominant beliefs that we've created our identity from come from childhood. So when those beliefs get activated amongst family in your adulthood, it can set off triggers and set off um, arguments and sadness and depression and lack of worth and value and love and a whole litany of things. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about that and what you can do to kind of counteract that uh, or be really more consciously aware of what is happening. So we're going to give you an example um, first, but we want to, I have notes here. This is what I'm looking at. <laughs> we, so the first thing I hear is other people trigger your own inadequacies within you. So there are, when you get triggered, there are things that you're telling yourself that get triggered by that person. It's not like they're coming, well, it is kind of like they're coming up and pressing your button, but you already had that button there for them to press. And so when those people come in and push your triggers, they're, they're reminding you or pointing out to you that you have a belief or you have an association or an attachment to something um, that triggers you, wounds you, brings up old stuff. So social gatherings are like the gathering of people who show you what your fears are and how to release them. So unless you know what they are, they're very difficult to release. So when we run into people like social family gatherings or people who push our triggers, they're there to show us what that is so that you can release it. So here's an example. We're going to talk about um, a holiday gathering with your family. And let's just say you show up and you've got a really nice haircut and you're feeling good and you're all excited to present it to everyone. And you walk in and your mother says, you know, I don't like your haircut. You know, ugh, you know, I've liked it much better the other way. Or I liked it when you were a blonde or I don't like this color or it's you know, makes your face look fat or whatever that is right well if you had um, a belief that based in your experience as child in childhood so maybe in childhood you had moments with your mom where she brushed your hair and she braided it and she put it together or she washed it or whatever it is that you had a, a moment in time where this was a bonding experience for you. You may have associated as a child that, you know, my hair and, and my hair looking good and being pretty is, is a way that in which I receive love from my mother. So I have to take really good care of my hair and it's very important that it feels good to you. And then you go to this family gathering and your mom's like, I don't like your hair. So what happened here is you immediately have turned that into rejection. And that rejection sounds like my mom doesn't like my hair, which means she doesn't love me. I can't get love from my mom because my hair is not right. Believe me, I know it sounds ridiculous, but there are people out there, maybe it's you, who have these types of triggers. They're associating that time of bonding with hair um, as a means of their worth, their value, and being worthy of love. And when your mom rejects you or rejects your hair, which is something that you're really proud of, um, you take that as a rejection of um, she doesn't want to give you love. And I have to stretch your imagination here with me. So it's um, so then you have a belief here. I'm just reading my notes. Um, that I only the belief is I only receive love from my mother um, when I have nice hair and when she doesn't agree with that that triggers everything but the recognition here is that you don't need that love from your mom so what you've done is you've placed that belief that says my value my worth and being worthy of love is based on my mom's um, acceptance of in this case your hair I mean it could be anything and you know, anything that reminds you of your of your mom I and mean, it could be a trigger I'm using hair just as an example um, and so now you have this recognition that 
you've associated being worthy of love on your mom, right? So you're constantly seeking approval from the mother figure, right? So maybe um, whenever you meet your mom, you always make sure, and this is for ladies, your hair, or maybe for men, um, your hair is done, your makeup's done, you look good, you've got nice clothes on, and, and you put up this, this um, facade of, of somebody who you're, you maybe that's not in alignment with you. It doesn't feel good, but you do it every single time to get her approval, to get her recognition, to get her love. And that is out of alignment because now you're trying to people please her. You're trying to people please her and changing what it is about you in order to get her approval so that she will love you. Are you following me? I hope you're following me. So when you identify that you're doing that when you have that recognition and that awareness that you're doing that you can stop it <laughs> you can even be you can get dressed for your holiday occasion be like oh my gosh I'm doing this because I want approval from my mom and then what we invite you to do is to sit with that and allow all the feelings that come up from that and it, it may take you even back to childhood to rise, to really flow through you. And it may come through as anger, sadness, depression, um, whatever, whatever emotion comes in. We invite you to sit with that emotion and let it run its full course. Because the moment you feel the emotion attached to that resonance that you're looking for love and acceptance from the mother, uh, your worth and value on the mother, once you recognize that and realize that there's going to be a rush of emotions that come up and we're inviting you to sit with those and allow them to really start to come up and purge out. So whether you cry or you get angry or you meditate or whatever it is, just honor the fact that this piece is coming up, that you, you have had awareness around it, you recognize it, and then let it leave. And that is a shift out of that people pleasing. I have to impress everybody in order to be me and moving into that, um, knowing that vibration, that alignment of you are loved already right now, exactly the way you are from your own essence, your own soul within. Your soul doesn't have to impress anybody. You don't have to impress anyone to get love. Your soul already knows that you are loved. And then when you're able to release that off of other people, then that allows more of your soul essence to come in. Um, so when you are projecting that responsibility for having someone else love you and you release them from that, then it changes your whole world because now you can walk into a holiday, holiday gathering and your mom can hate everything. She can hate your hair, your makeup, your job. It doesn't matter because you know that you're stabilized inside your own soul's essence, that you know that you're loved, you have worth, you have value, and what anybody else says isn't about you anyway. It's about them and their inadequacies within themselves. So we hope that was helpful. If so, please leave some comments, share in your social networks, and don't forget to stop by Facebook and join our Soulful Shift Kickers group. Happy holidays.